Big swing from left to right here at the long par three. This would get it back to even. On Sunday night football, the Washington Redskins starting the game with arms linked, some kneeling during the national anthem. The Oakland Raiders sitting down. We are SEAL Team 6, and we're going to be talking about some events from the Sport Business Journal. Um, I'll be talking about the FedEx Cup and PGA Championship and the LeVar um, Cup in tennis. And I'll be talking about the I Move Me campaign of ASICS. And uh, I'm Trevor, and I'll be talking about the current issues of the NFL. So it was recently announced that Chicago will be the host city of the 18th edition of the Laver Cup. It will be at the United Center from September 21st to 23rd. And basically what this is, is a all-star team tennis tournament. And it was created by Roger Federer and his agent um, to honor famous tennis player Rod Lever. Um, the games are taken seriously and it was the last time it was in Prague, it was sponsored by Rolex and Mercedes-Benz. Um, it draws the sport's top athletes all to one place. And basically how they do it is two teams of six players and they classify it Team Europe versus Team World. Um, there's three days of singles and then they have one doubles match. And it's very interesting to see the world's best single players come together um, and play as doubles like Federer and Nadal did, who are arch rivals. It was just a really great thing for tennis fans to see. And it, it's going to be great for Chicago to have some publicity and host a big event like this. So what happened at the NFL last weekend? Okay, so Sunday something ha happened in the NFL that was pretty bizarre for, I guess, for time right now. But... Uh, Trump tweeted Saturday that the NFL players should definitely not be taking a knee for our anthem as it's disrespectful for our flag and for our country. And Sunday in the Jags and um, Ravens game, we learned that the players weren't going to stand for that. And more than 25 players on both teams actually sat or kneeled for the national anthem. And uh, then later Sunday, Three teams actually stood in the locker room when the national anthem was playing and then Monday night the Dallas Cowboys whole staff and organization took a knee before the anthem and then stood for the anthem um, Trump actually tweeted a lot more stuff but one of his tweets he actually took it to a different type of professional sport which was NASCAR and said that uh, they wouldn't stand for disrespecting the flag and our country and they would always have his back when it was time to stand for the national anthem. All right, so Sunday in the NFL there was a lot of protests about uh, Trump and his tweets and the players in the league for the national anthem and uh, I just wanted to get your thought on whether or not you thought Trump was right or in the wrong. Um, well, I think um, from my point of view, I think that Trump was wrong for uh, tweeting. I think um, his tweets add more confusion to like the public and make the situation a little bit more than it needed to be, I'd say in my opinion. Um, in my opinion, I don't see people, I don't think people should kneel for the national anthem because people have fought for a country and have died. So I kind of find that disrespectful, but I understand their point of view of racial inequality because in America there is there is a divide whether you say there is or not. Um, but in my opinion, I don't think that Trump should have um, should have tweeted and made like stirred the pot. I guess. And Thanks. Appreciate it. Hey everyone, it's Cole here. So I'm here to talk about a great sporting event that's going to be coming up in the future. It's called the Rugby World Cup. The Rugby World Cup is one of the main events that happens in the rugby world and it's where all the countries come together and try to fight to gain the title for their country. So in 2023 there's going to be an event held and there's three countries that are in the front running to grab this event. 
Ireland, France, and South Africa. Now why two out of the three of these countries have held an event before, the one is the favorite, and that one is Ireland. Ireland is a favorite because rugby is just a huge sport there, and they're ready to hold one of these events that they haven't held in the past. France has held one in 1995, and South Africa did in 2007. But Ireland, yet to have one, but they might just in this future. Money's going to be a huge factor that's going to play part in who gets the bid in the 2023 World Rugby Cup. In the past, lots of countries have brought in money. For instance, in 2015, England hosted this event, and England brought in the most money than any other country has in the past. And in 2019, Japan will be holding this event, which a lot of experts say will not bring in as much money as England did, or even countries that happened in the past, which is weird because Japan is a big country and you think a lot of people would come out, but that's not the instance, because Japan is not a huge rugby country, which would be a problem that will happen at this event, 2019. But in 2023, money will not be a huge factor for these three countries. They have already promised the board that they will bring in the most money that any other country has in the past. Ireland is ready for this event, and they love rugby there. So a lot of people will come out to this event, and a lot of money will be made. Same goes for South Africa. People love rugby in South Africa, and they will be excited to host another World Rugby Cup there. And people will come out, spend money, support all these countries and all these athletes. France, on the other hand, has a big problem. In 2024, France will be holding the Summer Olympics. A lot of things go into the Summer Olympics with building construction and facilities and housing for all these athletes. So France won't be focusing as much a year prior to the World Rugby Cup as they will be preparing for the Olympics in 2024. So that's why France is in the bottom, bottom tier for the bidding in the World Rugby Games. On November 15th of 2017, the country will be picked to see who hosts the Rugby World Cup in 2023. This will be a big event that will be held just to see what country gets it. A lot of time, thought, and effort has gone in to see what country will be picked. A lot of factors that will go in is the money, facilities, and other things that will be going on with the love of the sport. So I hope all you guys stay tuned and stay updated on who will be picked. Because so how did Justin Thomas do this weekend? Um, Justin Thomas actually had kind of a disappointing weekend. Um, this, they uh, ended the PGA Tour and it was pretty anticlimactic, they said. Um, so he ends up losing the PGA Championship by one stroke and that's kind of what he was focused on. Um, but he did end up winning the FedEx Cup, which is a season-long tournament. And basically how that works is that golfers get points for each tournament they, they're in and the end winner with the most points wins, and they end up winning $10 million. So Justin Thomas won the FedEx Cup, but is disappointed because he didn't win the PGA Championship. Um, and it was kind of awkward because he already won the FedEx Cup before the PGA Championship was over, so it didn't make it um, as exciting for fans or anything like that. So the PGA might change their scheduling um, and it was basically them just uh, dividing up prizes by the end um, with Justin Thomas winning the FedEx Cup and then a rookie winning the PGA Tour. did ASICS just name the global agency following the I Movement campaign? So they call it Such Sachi and they, they created the I Movie campaign in order to motivate all men and women all around the world of any age, any level of sport to in order to benefit from the good aspects of the good positive the good mental and physical aspects of sports activity. And they also 
also sponsored the 2020 Olympics in Tokyo 